This is an interesting text-to-speech architecture that I haven't seen implemented so far, and it was brought to my attention by John Young on my community post, so I very much appreciate it. So it's still in research, and I'd say the results of it are not state-of-the-art. It doesn't sound the best, and it doesn't produce the best outputs. However, I think it is a very interesting way of going about speech for LLMs. So what speech GPT is, is it's a multimodal conversational chatbot, basically, and you can input audio and get back text or audio from it. So just a quick little diagram that kind of explains it is if you put text in, it'll output text. You can also ask it questions with audio and it can respond back in audio. You can ask it to read sentences, it'll read sentences, and then you can ask it to basically transcribe sentences as well. Now, all of these I would say are decent. I wouldn't say, like I said, they're not state of the art, but to me, it opens up possibly an entire new um, world for speech generation with a GPT model that is able to do speech. And so I've been researching this area because Tortoise actually uses an autoregressive model for its back end where it predicts speech tokens that are then converted into male spectrograms, which are then converted into audio waves. And that's what we hear from Tortoise TTS. And instead of GPT-2, what this one is using is Llama. So I'm just going to run through a couple of examples um, and then I'll go ahead and run it on my computer just to show you that it does in fact work. Here's an instruction set right here and then here's the input. Let's take a listen. I'm afraid there are no signs here, said he. And this is transcription right here. So that's where it says, can you transcribe the speech? And then we'll go ahead and jump into this one right here, which is text to speech. Would you mind speaking the words as naturally as possible? And it's for this sentence. Day is a sunny day and I'm happy to be here. So if you take a quick listen to that one, the beginning of it is cut off. I do think that is an issue with the model. It tends to cut off the beginning of the sentences. And we'll just do this bottom one because it's better for the sentence. I'm a large language model that can lessen in speak. A member of Fudan University and glad to talk with you. So that is the Libri speech um, data set, as you can tell from the woman's voice there. And there are a bunch of other examples in here. I'm not going to go through exactly, but they go over how you can have kind of like a talking encyclopedia where you have an input and then a speech output. Um, I think this is actually pretty cool. So let's say, for example, you want a poem. So this is a speech input and it's going to output a speech output. So let's listen to this real quick. Right. A five-line poem that praises spring. And then let's listen to the output. The sun is out, the sky is blue, the flowers bloom, and the birds sing too. The days are long, the nights are short. The spring is here, and it's so sweet and warm. And as you can see, this is the transcription right here. And I believe the model also outputs the transcription for it. So um, if I remember reading correctly somewhere in the paper, it produces the text first and then it'll read out the audio. And the cool thing is that all of this is inside of one llama model. It's not split up into different components. Like for example, for me to get a chatbot working, I need a text engine. So like llama, and then I'll feed that text output into a text to speech engine, which will then be the output. Instead, this model has all of that packaged into one. Um, so you don't need to go through that entire sequence. If you want to go ahead, take a listen to some more of these examples and read through a little bit of it that is uh, going to be here. And so this is the paper. I'm not going to go through it in depth too much as some of it is over my head. But uh, the way that they do the training here is they have a three part training session. So they've got stage one, stage two, stage three. From the way I understand it, stage one is where they enable the LLM to be able to handle speech uh, units. And then the second stage is where they align it with um, instructions so that they're able to induce speech when you ask for speech and text when you ask for text. And then they do a stage three, which is a LoRa adaptation of it. And unfortunately, I, I'm not too certain on this stage. But with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. I actually have it um, pulled up right here on this right side. So I had it. I got it locally installed. You need to do it in WSL. Um, you'll probably run through hell if you are trying to do it inside of Windows. So that's why I went with WSL. We're going to play around with it with text first. So I can go ahead and ask it a question like, can you tell me the capital of the United States. So this should be inside of it. And it's actually pretty fast. It's running the, I believe it's a 13 billion parameter model, um, unquantized. So there you go. The response, it probably took about six or so seconds. It says the capital of the United States is Washington, DC. 
and then it gives some more information. And now I'm going to ask that question via speech. Unfortunately, I have to record it in another software and then bring that uh, prompt over into the software. So let's do that real quick. Can you tell me the capital of the United States? Let's go ahead, stop that recording. I'm going to go ahead and now drag this into here. And then SpeechGPT has an interesting way of parsing wave files. So um, it does, it does pre-processing on the prompt. And so what I can do here is give it the um, directory for it. So we're going to do speech prompt and then output underscore six dot wave input there. And then we'll wait for it to uh, recognize the speech and then respond to it. Okay. So now let's take a look at the answer here. So instead of the text only that it had before, now it has a transcript and it says, can you tell me what the, can you tell me the capital of the United States? So it has the question that I asked and then it gives the text response and then it now has a speech response. So let's see if the output of it is actually correct and is reading the correct speech. So let's take a listen. The capital of the United States is Washington, DC. It is located in the District of Columbia and is the home of the federal government of the United States. So there you go. It was able to take in my um, question via speech and then respond to it with speech and also text. Now there is another thing that we can do is which is um, text to speech. So now I'm going to go ahead and copy this sentence and say there's a specific way that we have to ask questions and it says this is input and then we can put in our input. And this should now read it out in text to speech. So let's go ahead and wait for that. All right. And so if you take a look right here, you can actually see that there are a bunch of um, discrete speech units um, or tokens, or I think that's what it's using. It's using Hubert to produce these and then it retranscribes it into audio with the vocoder. And let's go ahead and take a listen to that. The capital of the United States is Washington, DC. It is located in the District of Columbia and is the home of the federal government of the United States. All right. So there you go. That's text to speech right there. And one other thing that I think you can do is um, you could say read this in an angry tone. And I did find that you can kind of induce emotion into it. So let's go ahead and take a listen to this. The capital of the United States is Washington, D.C. It is located in the District of Columbia and is the home of the federal government of the United States. To me, that sounded a little bit more coarse, a little bit more blunt in the words. I don't think it worked too particularly well. I do think the authors do note that in the paper, it's not too good at paralingu paralinguistic features of uh, speech, where here you go right here, it says it does not consider paralinguistic information. So things like different emotional tones. Um, I did get a little bit of variance in some emotion for some prompts that I did, but that could possibly be just one of those things with the uh, transformers and large language models where the results can be quite different from response to response. So maybe it was just the variation there because it is um, a autoregressive model. And yeah, I thought this model was pretty interesting and thought I'd share. Once again, thank you to my members for supporting the channel and that's going to be it for today.